Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve a pretty interesting problem from today's leak code contest, detect squares. So this is a pretty challenging problem for a medium, but it's actually pretty easy once you know the trick behind it. So that's what I'll be explaining to you. The trick for detecting squares or even generic rectangles within a uh, grid. So we're basically designing a data structure with three uh, methods, three functions. We're gonna be given a stream of points and we want to store these points that we're given. They are gonna be two dimensional. They have an X and Y coordinate. You can see some examples down here. And we could even have duplicate points in the exact same spot and we do want to store those. So a good a data structure to use would be a list. So that's one data structure we're gonna be using, a list or an array list. So storing the points is the easy part, but we're also given a second requirement to implement, the count method. And this count method will take one parameter, a point, so a single point that may or may not already be in the you know stored list of points, but it could be a new point or something. And uh, given that, we want to be able to count how many possible exact perfect squares are we able to make with this new input query point and all the points that we already have stored within our list. So suppose that this was the query point, then we wanna know how many different ways can we make squares if we are allowed to choose any of the points that we already had stored. Let's say all of these three uh, points were already stored, then clearly we could make uh, one point or one square, right? What if we had two duplicates of this point on the top left? Then how many squares would we be able to make? Well, technically we'd be able to make two squares, right? We could swap the top left point if we had two, uh, you know, two copies of it, so then we could make two. What if we had two copies of this point and we had two copies of the bottom right point? How many squares could we make then? In that case, we could make four squares. Where I got this four is basically by multiplying how many copies we have of this and how many copies we have of this. So that's gonna be important. So uh, we're gonna, since we, it, the, you know, the count of how many uh, each point that we have matters, I'm gonna be using a map or a hash map to basically count the number of occurrences for each point. So now for the actual trick, the important part of this problem. The most brute force way is gonna be an n cubed approach. Why exactly is that? Well, let's say we're given this a query point, then we wanna run through all possible combinations of the remaining points we have, right? We wanna do an n, uh, an entire loop, uh, you know, going through every single point, suppose that point was in the top left position. Then we wanna do another n loop to suppose every point was in the bottom left and an n loop for every bottom right point. And then we wanna check, okay, does this combination of four points actually form a perfect square or not. So that's really not efficient, right? And it's actually not super easy to code either. So what's an easier way to do it? And we do need a tiny bit of geometry to kind of understand how we can make it more efficient. So suppose we're given a query point, right? What's an easy way to determine the rectangle of this point or of you know, trying to make a square. What's an easy way to determine that? Well, since we're actually dealing with squares, it's a little bit different than the trick I'm gonna show you, but I'm gonna show you a trick that can apply to all, uh, that's a little bit more generic and it could apply to rectangles as well. So if instead of detecting squares, we wanted to detect rectangles, I'll show you the way that we could do that. So it, we're given a point, right, this point. We wanna find a diagonal point from this one. So instead of doing three n loops, like instead of doing three for loops to find every single you know matching pair of three points, we're just gonna run a single loop and supposing that every single point we have available to us was the diagonal point from the query point that we're given. Now we wanna verify if it could actually form a square. How do we know if this diagonal point with this query point could actually form a square? Well, of course, the height difference of them or the Y difference of them has to be the exact same as the width distance or the X distance between them, right? So that's something we can easily verify by just taking the difference of the coordinates of these two points, right? Once we have verified that, we know it's possible if these two points are diagonal to each other for them to form a square. 
And once we have that, we have actually, uh, you know, then we can instantly check an O of one if it's possible that these two form an actual square given the current points that we have. How can we check it with O of one? Well, remember we do have a hash map, right? What are we gonna say? Suppose the coordinates of this point are P, X, and P, Y, or you could say Q, X, Q, Y for the query point, and suppose the coordinates of this bottom point are X and Y. We want to know, does there exist a top left point? How can we check that? By taking the X coordinate of this point and the Y coordinate of this point and checking if that exists in our hash map. In other words, we could check this coordinate, X and P, Y. How do we check the bottom right point? The exact opposite, right? We take P, X and Y and check does this exist in our hash map, right? Since we're using a hash map, that'll be an O of one lookup, right? So that's really easy. So then we can instantly check if we can form a square or not. But remember, we could maybe have three copies of this top left and maybe we could have two copies of the bottom right. So we wanna take the counts of them and then multiply them together. And we can do that easily with our hash map because with our hash map, we are storing the counts of each of these points that we have in our input. And remember, the O of N loop is only iterating through the diagonal list of points. Okay, so now let's get into the code. And I think I mentioned at the beginning that we are gonna use a list, but now that I think about it, the list is actually not necessary. So we can actually even shorten up the code from what I originally had. So we're just gonna use a map. So this map is gonna be called points count. It's gonna be a dictionary in Python or you know a hash map. And if you use default dict, it'll just make things a little bit easier for us. So if we try to retrieve a key that hasn't already been inserted here, then the default value of that will be zero. That's what basically this provides for us. And that's just gonna make the code a little bit shorter for us. But so every time we're given a point, right, add point, all we wanna say is the, you know, the count of this point has increased by one, right? That's very easy to implement with a hash map. We'll just say, uh, for this key. Uh, by the way, a list can't be a key value for a hash map in Python, so we're gonna have to transform this list into a tuple. So this point will be converted into a tuple and then uh, we can increment that count by one. So if it doesn't already exist in the map, its default count will be zero and then we'll add one to it. So pretty straightforward here. Now for the interesting part is the count function. So we want to count, you know, the number of ways we can create a square. Initially, we'll say it set that result to zero. We'll extract the uh, X and Y coordinates of the query point that we're given. So point can be, you know, e we can easily get the X and Y coordinates of it. And then we're going to iterate through every single point in the list of points that we've saved or in our map. So every X, Y in uh, the points count, we don't... Uh, want the count of this particular point remember this loop is just going through all possible diagonal values to the query point that we're given in the input right but we need to actually verify that this is a diagonal point so how can we do that well we're going to say uh, is the absolute value of the difference between the y coordinates equal uh, to the uh, absolute value of the difference between the x coordinates if that's true, then we can continue. If it's not true, meaning these are not equal, then it's not really possible for these to form a square at all if they're diagonal to each other. So in that case, we're just gonna continue to the next iteration of the loop. But they also mentioned in the uh, problem description that the squares have to have a positive era, uh, area. Uh, basically, that means we can't just use a, you know, we can't just stack four points at the exact same coordinate and call that a square. I don't know if technically that is a square or not, but it, that square would have zero area. So what we wanna just make sure to avoid that case, we just wanna say this X can't be equal to the query point, you know, or if the Y is equal to the query point, then we're also gonna continue, right? So if, if these points are stacked on top of each other, you know, if they're not really diagonal to each other, then we're gonna continue. So other than that, uh, now we know that these two points are diagonal to each other. So now we wanna know, can we actually create a square with them or not? How can we know if we can create a square with them? Well, we're gonna say, um, does the point in our points map, so points count, does that, uh, th let's say, you know, one of those points, which is X and P, Y, does that point exist? And does the opposite point exist as well? 
both of these points have to exist. So, uh, you know, just copy and pasting and updating the coordinates. So this will be the opposite. So as I mentioned in the drawing, both of these points have to exist. And what we're going to do is just multiply the counts together, right? Because if each of these is one, then one times one is one. We can create one point uh, with the one uh, perfect square uh, with these coordinates, right? If it's two and two, then we're going to multiply two times two. We're going to say there's four possible ways we can create a perfect square with these. Uh, and we're just going to take this multiplication and add it to our result, which we declared up above. And... You know, that's the entire thing. Obviously, you can tell uh, pretty easily that this is a linear time function, right? Once we're done with that, we can actually just go ahead and return the result. Okay, so it looks like we are just going to implement this using a list. So instead of iterating through the keys of that, I'm just going to be maintaining a second variable. I'm sure you can do this without that, but I'm tired of trying to get it, this to work in Python. So I'm just going to go back to the first solution that I implemented. So... Uh, yeah, we're just going to be maintaining a list as well as a hash map. So every time we get a point, uh, we're going to be appending that point onto this list of points that we're maintaining. And then when we want to iterate through all the points that we have, we're not going to iterate through the map. We're going to iterate through the list of points that we implemented. So self.points. Uh, and then we are good to go. The solution will work. But one thing I did notice is I did have a little typo here. So the X and Y coordinates uh it needs to be x first and then y. For some reason, I put y and then px. So let's just swap these around, px, y. So these are the two opposite points as we showed in the drawing picture. And we're just iterating through the list of points. So that being said, the code should work. Hopefully it does. So let's try submitting it. And as you can see below, it does work. I hope it's pretty efficient. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. I hope this video uh, taught you something new.